pretty tasty.
Who was that?
pretty tasty.
You got some instant noodles, huh? Instant noodles? Uh-huh. It was invented in Japan. So you're wearing the scientist uniform. Wearing that scientist outfit lets you pose as a scientist. But be forewarned, you can't equip most of your weapons while you're disguised as a scientist. Even when you're disguised, your cover will be blown if you get blood on your clothes or something. If you do get blood on your clothes, take them off and switch to another outfit. The blood stain should come out after a little while. Ah, you found some lockers. Lockers are a highly prized commodity among intelligence agents. Spies throughout the ages have used lockers to help them accomplish their missions. Are you sure about that? Of course I am. You can use lockers for any number of purposes. Hiding yourself, hiding the bodies of enemy soldiers, using the door as a shield. Use them wisely and they'll prove valuable during the mission. To hide inside a locker, first open the locker by standing in front of it and pressing the action button. Once the door's open, you can enter the locker to hide inside it. To come out of the locker, just press the action button again. To hide an enemy's body in a locker, simply drag the body in front of an open locker. You can also break the doors of lockers. If the door of a locker won't open and you're determined to get inside, try breaking into it.
If you're looking for Sokolov, he's not here anymore. <laughs> Put that thing away, you'll spoil my drink. So, you're the intruder everyone's talking about. Typical capitalist dog. No manners. And who are you? You mean you've never heard of me? And you call yourself an agent? Very well, then. I am Alexander Leonovich Granin. A man of some importance, if I do say so myself. I am the foremost weapon scientist in the Soviet Union. And the head of the glorious Granin Design Bureau. This is the Order of Lenin. It is an honor of the greatest magnitude, given along with the title of Hero of Socialism to only the finest workers. It was awarded to me in recognition of my brilliant contributions to society. Since the Great Patriotic War, I have created countless weapons in the service of our great communist society. It was thanks to me that we were able to stamp out the Nazi scum. It was I who created the basic design for the mobile ballistic missile system you know and fear as SS-1C. Ah. You're crocked, aren't you? I'm merely drowning my sorrow. Because of him, I've got nothing to do but sit here and drink this crap. Him? Sokolov. It's him you're looking for, isn't it? Because of him, I have been stripped of my authority. My research has come to nothing. Look! It is a revolutionary mobile nuclear missile system. A bipedal tank. A bipedal tank? Yes, a walking tank. A robot. Are you familiar with the theory of the missing link between apes and humans? Well, this technology will be the missing link between infantry and artillery. A kind of metal gear, if you will. And this magnificent metal gear will mark a revolutionary step forward in weapons development. Metal gear? <laughs> but I won't be used so easily, no. No crying myself to sleep. For you see, I'm going to send these documents to my friend in the United States. What? These bastards will live to regret this. And when they themselves become the targets of my creation, they will know my true greatness. Yes, Sokolov's pathetic shagohad pales in comparison to my work. What are you going to do with a rocket engine on a tank? About Sokolov. A tank does not need a rocket. It needs something else. Look at these. Nice shoes. No. Legs. Legs that allow it to go anywhere. Just as when humans learn to walk upright. That is the real revolution in weaponry. Don't you agree? But, the fool's in charge, Joe Sokolov. And where is Sokolov? My project has been terminated. The philosopher's legacy has been handed over to him. What the hell are you talking about? The philosopher's legacy. Haven't you heard of the philosophers? The Colonel has inherited their immense legacy. Volgin's father was in charge of the Philosopher's money laundering activities. In the confusion of the war, 
somehow ended up with their treasure. And Volgin inherited that treasure illegally. We never need to worry about the military budget. The development costs at our facility are all paid out of the Colonel's deep pockets. The weapons born here will be the genes for creating an entirely new form of warfare. The funding for my research came out of that legacy. Came out of it. Now. My money, my men, all have been diverted to the Shagohan project. Tomorrow they will be conducting the final test, while Sokolov is making the final preparations in the weapons factory at Volgin's main base, the great fortress of Grozny Grad. Here I am, playing host to an enemy spy and drinking myself into a stupor. That's where they moved Sokolov? Yes. And the Shagohan is there too? Of course. Hey! You're not thinking of going to Grozny Grad. Are you mad? It's an impenetrable fortress. I'm sure it is. You'll be killed! I'll take my chances. Wait! What? Listen to me, you fool. I want to help you. Help me? To thank you for your compliment. What compliment? My shoes. Tatiana gave them to me. I wanted to thank you for complimenting me on them. I'll tell you how to get into the fortress. In return, I ask only that you get that idiot out of there and destroy the Shagohad. There is an underground tunnel that runs around the perimeter of the fortress. You should be able to use it to sneak into the base. Head for the mountains. The entrance to the tunnel is located there. Take this. You passed through a warehouse on your way here, didn't you? Yeah. There should have been a locked door inside of it. Do you remember it? Uh... This key will open that door. Beyond that door lies the vast jungle. You can climb up into the mountains from the far end of the jungle. Go back to the warehouse. Use the key to open the locked door and head for the mountains. Got it? Why are you helping me? Unlike Sokolov, the thought of defecting has never once crossed my mind. I love my country. I love this land. I cannot even imagine living anywhere else. I wish to remain a hero of the Great Motherland. I cannot bear the thought of being hounded into a corner and left to waste away. It is already dawn. You must hurry. I will remain here and nurse my troubles for a little longer. To capitalism! Sigand, Granin said something about putting legs on a tank. Do you know what he was talking about? If you ask me, it's gotta be a joke. Not only is making a tank walk on two legs a technical nightmare, but there's no point in making a walking tank to begin with. Putting legs on a tank would raise its clearance, increasing its frontal projection area. It'd also be less stable. 
Suppose the legs help the tank travel on bad roads. I, I don't see the logic in that. Isn't that what treads are for? I mean, anybody who'd seriously consider making a thing like that has got to be a wacko. Come to think of it, there was a guy in the States who wrote a paper on that subject. What was his name? Emerson? Heinrich? Something like that. I don't really remember. Of course, no one took that seriously. Do you want to save? 